Hey y'all, it's Ashley Bookishrom and I'm back with another video. Today is finally my October TBR. I am super excited to finally be able to get this up. I am excited for October for fall reading just like everybody else. October, November, December is just the perfect time to read cozy books, holiday books, scary books, thrillers, mist, just everything. And this seems also to be like the height of the readathon season. So if y'all didn't already know, there are a lot of readathons that are going to be going on in the month of October. We have Black Aweenathon, there's the Fortnite Fright readathon, there is Naked, which is being done by the Black pros club which is only a week and there are so many different readathons that I want to participate in so this is not going to be a TBR that's going to focus on the reading prompts and TBRs for those readathons. I'm trying very hard to move away from such a structured reading schedule. I am about to go back full force into work not that I haven't been working but we are starting back I mean really really heavy so I'm keeping that in the back of my mind I also want to give myself as much flexibility as possible so my TBRs have now become more of a what's on my radar type of situation I did this with September and I did read a few things off of that list that I compiled but I was able to just kind of read whatever I wanted to read and it helped by the mid-month point in September I had already read 17 books so that's why I like that flexibility type of situation because it gives me the opportunity to read what I want to read as a mood reader. So October is going to be kind of the same thing. I have quite a few spooky books, quite a few mysteries, thrillers, whole bunch of stuff just on my TBR that I am anticipating wanting to pick up but this is not a definite list like this is the list that I must follow. This is not going to include any arcs that I've received for review, any projects that I'm working on. These are just books within my collection that I am hoping to maybe put my hands on possibly in the month of October. So let's go ahead and jump right in. So the first thing that I have on this list here is actually a middle grade series that I've been meaning to continue for a very very long time and that is the School for Good and Evil trilogy. I talked about this a little bit in my series to continue video and I have already read the School for Good and Evil. I actually ended up reading this book twice and it's about time that I moved on to the second book in the series which is A World Without Princes and the third book is The Last Ever After and these are basically middle grade books that are fairy tale retellings and it's about these two young girls by the name of Tabitha and Sophie who or Agatha I don't know why I always want to call her Tabitha her name is Agatha and Sophie who live in this village where the kids get taken to go to the school for good and evil and of course by the descriptions the physical descriptions that you see here you would think that one is supposed to be destined to go to the school for good and one's supposed to be destined to go to the school for evil however things change things get flipped on their head. I think the purpose of this is that physical is not an indicator of what's on the inside of a person. So I really enjoyed the series as a whole. The first book, like I said, I've read it twice and I've really enjoyed it. But I think it's time that I actually move on to the other two. That way I can actually, you know, complete the series because there's a another follow-up trilogy that's another three books so this is six books in total and then I just found out that Victoria Aveyard and Soman Chanani are actually doing a crossover graphic novel between Red Queen and The School for Good and Evil so that should be really interesting. So this next set is two books that are actually rolling over from my September on my radar list and that is Arl Stein's Goosebumps say cheese and die and monster blood I meant to get to these in September I did not get to them so I'm anticipating picking them up this month as you all know I really do want to read all 62 books in the original series and then I'll probably make my way over to some other books like slappy has his own line and there are some other things out there but I wanted to read the original 62 like I said didn't get to these like I thought I would but definitely two that are perfect for the month of October. Another rollover that we have is the Battle of the Labyrinth by Rick Riordan. This is the fourth book in the Percy Jackson and the Olympian series. I need to finish the series this year. If I don't get to the Heroes of Olympus this year that is perfectly fine but I do need to finish the series this year so I can finally move on to the Heroes of Olympus as my part of my reread. That way I can start picking up the Trials of Apollo, Magnus Chase and I'm so interested in seeing what's going to happen with 
the rest of the series because Trials of Apollo the last book for that comes out this month. I can't remember the exact date but it does come out this month. So I am anticipating really buckling down and finishing this book and finishing the last book in the series. If you haven't heard of these books please 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 I implore you check them out. The next book that I have is actually also a reread surprisingly I know it's a couple of rereads on this list and that is The Diviners by Libba Bray. I've been meaning to reread this series for a while. I know that the fourth book of course came out this year I believe in February is when it was released and I don't want to pick that one up because it's been so long since I read The Diviners. I think this book originally came out in 2012 so it's been eight years since this one has been published and I need to do a reread of it because I remember the general synopsis but I don't remember specific details. I know that it's just around a woman by the name or a young girl by the name of Evie and Evie ends up moving to New York after some things happen in her hometown and she's able to touch objects and tell you the history of that object and who's been in possession of that object and can tell you things about you based off of whether you've had that object in your possession. And it's a little bit more complex and deeper than that. That's kind of the surface level summary of these. And they get super, super, super crazy. And this one definitely scared me. I always say this because I told Little Bray when I first met her that this book actually gave me nightmares. And she signed this book saying, I really am this creepy. I'm right behind you. Love Little Bray. So it was, it was an experience and I'm looking forward to reading and annotating this. The next one that I have on my list here is Cemetery Boys by Aiden Thomas. This is a, about a young boy by the name of Hadriel. I think I'm saying that right. And he is having some issues with his family. They're not accepting of his gender identity and he decides that he is going to prove that he can be a brujo and things go wrong and he actually was trying to save his cousin but resurrects the school bad boy who is not willing to accept that he is dead and he wants to tie up some loose ends so they agree to work together and then of course I think a uh, romance probably does ensue while they spend some time working together. I've heard nothing but amazing things about Cemetery Boys. I think this is the perfect opportunity to read it so I'm super excited to pick this one up. The next book that I have here is Incendi by Zarada Cordova which is absolutely beautiful. This cover is so beautiful. So this book is about a girl by the name of Renata and she is captured and taken to this palace and she has this magical ability I believe to wipe memories or to take people's memories and she's used to basically kill thousands of her own people. So what ends up happening is she ends up joining this group called the Whispers and they are a secret group that works against the crown. And when a friend of hers that she has grown to love gets captured, she ends up having to go back in order to complete his mission for him. And she's having trouble, of course, keeping that secret identity of working for the Whisper. So I've heard nothing but great things about this. This cover screams spookiness and Halloween and all types of stuff. So I'm excited and this will officially be my first Arana Cordova book. I may pick up Labyrinth Lost, Labyrinth Lost as well. I haven't decided yet but I know I definitely wanted to read this one. The next one that I have is One of Us is Next by Karen M. McManus. This is the sequel to One of Us is Lying so I can't really say much about it but One of Us is Lying is essentially a flipped and thriller version of The Breakfast Club and I was very surprised about that one. I think I gave it like a three, three and a half star but I'm I'm excited to pick up the sequel and see where she has taken these group of individuals. She also has another book coming out in December I believe called The Cousins and I'm gonna put a cover right here. It looks really really good. I think I've read everything that she has put out except this one so I want to read this one that way I can read The Cousins when it does come out. I also have Perfect Little Children by Sophie Hanna. I talked about this one a little bit in my library haul. This is about a woman by the name of Beth and Beth is in this weird predicament where she's not really contacting her old best friend, she hasn't seen her, she is fighting not to see her, not to go in, not stalk her per se, but not to investigate what's been going on with her because they haven't been in contact for at least 10 years. 
and she ends up breaking her strong will and she ends up seeing her ex-best friend and they are in their driveway I believe I actually ended up starting this one so I'm trying not to go too far into it but I believe that they're in their driveway and she's getting the kids out of the car and Beth sees that the kids are the same exact age that they were when they stopped communicating so now Beth is in this position where she's like well why are her kids the same exact age we're 10 years later they hadn't grown nothing had changed about them same exact age that they were when she saw them last so this is an interesting book I don't know whether it's going to be thriller or paranormal but it's 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 interesting the next book that I have here is the 10th hall by Sarah Faring this is one of those books that I think is a hit or a miss either you're really really gonna enjoy it or you're not going to enjoy it type of situation and I think that Bethany actually did end up enjoying this Bethany from beautifully bookish Bethany she did enjoy it and she just read Sarah's new book White Fox and she said that was really really good and that those two were taking place in the same universe and this is about a woman by the name of of Mavi who ends up going to this boarding school which is in Argentina and she's working there and she gets these warnings like not to you know roam at night not to do certain things but then she starts noticing the weird behavior I think of the other teachers and students they're acting as if they're possessed just strange really haunting weird behavior and apparently this one has a crazy twist to it so I don't want to know anything about it I don't want to know anything about it. I just am going into it blind. So hopefully this is one that I do end up enjoying. The next book that I have here is Ninth House by Lee Bardugo. This is a very well known book. I'm late to the game in reading it. But I just wanted to delay and and read it. And plus I was waiting for a library copy to come in. And this is about a young woman by the name of Alex Stern who has gone through seems like some pretty traumatic and serious things and she gets the opportunity to attend Yale and be a part of these secret societies which are pretty intense which I know really do actually exist so I'm really interested to see how Lee Bardugo portray portrays some aspects of this book this is definitely an adult book I know that going into it not to have expectations of reading works that are similar to her YA things because I've read I believe I've only read Shadow and Bone by her but I know not to go in with those expectations so this is one that I think will be great for these spooky months. I think this is Dark Academia. I think everybody categorizes it as Dark Academia so yes. Next I have Gods of Jade and Shadow by Sylvia Moreno Garcia. This is one that I also talked about in my recent library haul which is a book that is about a woman by the name of Cassiopeia who is living in Mexico in a small town. She wants to get out and she ends up raising the Mayan god of death and she's supposed to help him avenge his brother for his throne and there are rewards that come with doing this. But then also I think things go horribly wrong if she doesn't succeed. So this is one that I know a lot of people have enjoyed. I do also have Sylvia Moreno Garcia's book Mexican Gothic on audio. So I may end up also reading that one. There's a couple of duplicate individuals that may happen this month. But I do know that I'm super interested in picking this one up just because I'm a huge fan of like mythology. Just myths, legends, folk tales are just really really intriguing to me especially when you look at them in comparison to different cultures and religions and periods of time so this is one that is just really calling to my spirit <laughs> plus it's, it's I gotta read it because it's a library book and I gotta turn it in soon so next I actually have quite a bit of cozy mysteries that I want to read I love cozy mysteries and this is the prime time to read cozy mysteries I didn't read as much as I wanted to read last year in terms of cozy mysteries but this is like my month where I really want to read cozy mysteries so the first one that I have here is fudge cupcake murder by Joanne Fluke this is the fifth book in the Hannah Swenson series can't tell you anything about it but it is such a cute and fun series I mean it's pretty formulaic okay like a lot of cozy mysteries honestly are are formulaic it, it's not that hard to tell sometimes what direction some of these books are going in but the purpose 
the name cozy they make you feel cozy just quaint little mysteries and I'm a foodie so foodie cozy mysteries are just always on par for my soul. The next one that I have is A Batter of Life and Death by Ellie Alexander. This is also the second book in the Big Shop mystery series so I can't really tell you much about it but this is another once again food based cozy mystery. It's about a woman by the name of Jules who ends up going back to her hometown of Oregon. I always have to look because I always want to say something else besides Oregon and I can never figure out why but she works in Oregon in this bake shop and there are mysteries of course that happen. People who turn up dead and of course Jules gets involved. So I really enjoyed the first one. I have the second one and I just ordered the third one so definitely want to try to finish this one. The next one that I have here is Brownies and Broomsticks by Bailey Kate which I think this one's going to be interesting because this is about a woman by the name of Katie and Katie is working I think as like an assistant manager or something of the sort in a shop in Ohio but then she goes to Savannah to work with her aunt and her uncle and she notices that her aunt is actually a witch. So I think that there's a different element to this one outside of someone working in a bakery and you know runs into someone and having a dead body that type of situation. This is actually a cozy mystery that incorporates some magical elements to it which I haven't read before. So I'm interested in reading this one and I think Lynn Lynn correct me if I'm wrong but I'm pretty sure that Lynn told me that she actually has read a lot of the series and she's really enjoyed it so and Lynn has good taste so yeah. The next one that I have here is Death by Dumpling by Vivian Chen. I've owned this one for a very very long time and I have not read it and I think I need to read it but this is about a woman by the name of Lena Lee. <laughs> Lena goes through this really really bad breakup and she pretty much is like I will slum it out move back home and work in the family restaurant even if she doesn't want to she just feels like that's the move that she needs to make and when she gets there the property manager of the restaurant actually turns up dead so I'm sure it's going to be up to her to solve the mystery. I think this one probably has about six to seven books out now so I got this when there was only two books out and I think the third was about to be published so you can see how long that I've had this and I have not read it and I think this is the month where I need to read it. All right y'all we are coming to the end thank goodness. <laughs> so I have some paranormal books that I want to listen to. I probably should have said this earlier so I was using Audible Escape to listen to some romance books and I was anticipating listening to some paranormal romance books this month which is probably what I'm going to focus on. Unfortunately Audible Escape ends as of November 1st so it sucks. So there is a readathon that is going on that is Audible Escape to the end and I am going to list out all the information down below because I don't want to get it confused because there's a couple of <laughs> readathons going on and I don't want to confuse who's doing what but I will leave all that information down below. So I will be listening to some paranormal romance stuff on Audible Escape just to let y'all know. So I do have a paranormal romance book here called Heart of Evil. This is one that I did talk about in the series that I wanted to complete video as well. This is the second book in the Crew Hunter series by Heather Graham. It's about these individuals that have the uh, some abilities that are affiliated with like ghost hunting, paranormal stuff. There's all also romance involving these so paranormal romance and I think each book switch perspectives. I think we got two characters in the first book that are not going to be main characters in this book. I think this focuses on another two characters so I have this one and then I also have the third book so yes. The next one I have here is Succubus Blues by Rochelle Mead. This is the first book in the Georgina Kincaid series. It's about Georgina Kincaid who is a succubus who tries to live a normal life but I mean at the end of the day she's a succubus and some weird paranormal things happen. I have not really heard too many people talk about this one but I'm excited to read this one because I can't remember the name of the booktuber who used to read these a lot. She has since come back to booktube but she put me onto a lot of stuff and I wish that she would have stayed but 
I understand life but she recently came back but I haven't seen a video from her lately but she put me on to a lot of stuff and this was one of the things that she had put me on was to the Succubus Blue series because she read a lot of Rochelle Mead's work so I got a copy of this one I thought I would check it out and the next one that I have is Moon Called which is the first book in the Mercy Thompson series by Patricia Briggs this is another book that that same booktuber has put me on to and I've heard a lot about these books and this is a shifter series this is about Mercy Thompson who apparently her next door neighbor is a werewolf but she also has some connections to paranormal stuff so I have not heard a lot of people talk about these lately this is an older series but I'm so excited to dive into it I'm so excited to dive into this and the last three that I have on this list they all are just some quick manga that I want to read to sh just to show you really quickly and that's going to be Tokyo Ghoul Volume 1, which I've heard nothing but great things about it. I believe this is about a boy who goes on a date with this girl, but she actually just wants to eat him and he gets immersed into this world of ghouls. I heard that the anime is really good and then I also heard that these are really good. I know that there's another sub-series of this called Tokyo Ghoul Re, which... Of course I'll pick up once I finish the rest of this stuff. I have Uzumaki by Junji Ito. I actually started this one. Lala was hosting a live on Instagram. I can't remember when but she was doing sprints on her Instagram live and I actually started reading this during Lala's live and I think I got about 30-40 pages into it hence I should use bookmarks but I always lose my bookmarks. Um, but this is about fear of spirals. And let me tell y'all something okay this book already 30 pages in has made me itch so bad I mean like seriously like so uncomfortable made my skin crawl and I was reading it at night I got on Twitter and I was like y'all told me not to read Uzumaki at night and I started reading it at night anyway and that was the stupidest thing that I could have done this is dark I was <laughs> I was expecting horror scary dark but I, I wasn't anticipating this the first 30 pages I was like oh my gosh oh my gosh I can't believe this is happening so I need to finish Uzumaki and a rollover from last night I did not get the chance to start it but it will be a reread for me um and this is a monster this is the double bind up compendium by um Naoki Urazawa and I've talked about this a couple of times like I said I've done a first impressions on this and this is about a doctor who ends up saving these twins but one of them becomes a serial killer sociopath type of situation and he has to enlist the help of the t the one of the twins in order to get the other twin and it's pretty interesting I don't remember a lot I remember basically the overview of a, a lot of stuff of it but not the details so I wanted to do a reread and this is the perfect month to do a reread all right y'all so like I said there are a lot of readathons taking place in the month of October a lot of things that I want to listen to a lot of things that I want to read I want to be crazy and see if I could read 31 books in 31 days don't hold me to it I can't make any promises I haven't broken 30 yet this year but I want to see if I can break 30 this month and read 31 books we shall see I think audiobooks and comics and graphic novels are gonna help a lot with that but I have such a big pile of stuff that I'm really interested in picking up of course y'all know like I'm not gonna get to all that stuff but it's stuff that I've really had my eye on in anticipation for this month so I'm excited to at least get to some of it as always in the comments below tell me like what are you interested in reading for the month of October what are some spooky things you're looking forward to reading recommend me some spooky things that you think I should be reading or you think I would like if you like this video give it a thumbs up if you want to see more content from me click the subscribe button if you're looking for ways to support my channel follow me on social media all those links will be down in the description box below and I'll be back with another video soon